Today, I'm going to cover something that I've been wanting to get into for a really long time, but finally just managed to wrap my head around and get the time to do it. And that is dyeing fabric with natural material, with plants and, and various things like that. Now, this is a whole world, a whole science, and I'm just going to share like what I figured out, my experience so far. Um, it may be right, it may not be so right. So when I first realized that, hey, you can dye fabric with plants, I got really excited and I wanted to go run right out and, and jump into it and gather plants and, and you know put them in water. But the thing is, if you do that, chances are it's not going to really stick to the fabric. You need to do a process of preparing the fabric um, to take this color. So from what I have understood, there are four basic steps. You need to scour or wash the fabric. Uh, you need to add tannins. Sometimes you may not need to do that. You need to mordant it, which is treating the fabric so that it will accept this color, and then you need to dye it. So step number one, scour washing. I just washed it with my natural detergent in the washer machine. Um, I'm not gonna do anything else than that. Now for tannins, you can do different things. I happen to have collected acorns in the fall for this specific reason. Um, so I have a whole bunch. You can also buy tannin extracts and things like that, in which case your results would probably be a lot more specific than mine. Because all I did here was pick out acorns and then grind them a bit, kind of break them up a little bit. And then I poured hot water over them and let them kind of sit for a couple days. So that was kind of like the first step that I did. Next step was figuring out like what fabric I was going to use. This is a heavyweight linen fabric. Um, so I figured I should really cut this up. I shouldn't dye the whole piece I have here in one color kind of defeats the purpose, right? So I cut it up into about half yard pieces and I, I got five pieces here. I figured that would be good to start with. So I'm using a large aluminum pot here that I have <laughs> taken and designated for this type of use specifically. It's a good idea to not mix your food pots with your dyeing pots. I know a lot of people recommend using stainless steel when it comes to pots and I'm sure that would work great too. I just happen to have this large aluminum pot sitting in my closet that I never used because it is massive. So that's what I decided to use. So next up here, I'm just uh, draining out the acorns and I'm adding some hot water to, uh, to bring the temperature up a bit. And then I remember before I soak the fabric in the tannin solution, I should really weigh the fabric. You need to know the weight of your fabric in order to calculate uh, what you need to use for your mordanting. Um, so I did that. At least I, I weighed how much one piece was. It's about 200 grams and I was going to use, I had five pieces. And after that, I added the fabric to this, this brown acorn tannin solution. And then I let it sit there overnight. Now I'm sure there are many different ways to do it, um, but I just submerged my washed fabric, washed and dried fabric in this oak liquid for a day or overnight. And then the next morning I, I came out and I took out the fabric and I, I put it in a water bucket. Now for more denting, there's a lot of different products you can use. I uh, am going to use this alum, which is potassium aluminum sulfate. And according to my research, it's a good idea to add between 10 to 15% of aluminum sulfate to the weight of the fabric. And then on top of that, you can also add something to alter the pH, like soda ash or something, but I decided to skip that step. So basically I measured out how much alum I would need for this fabric, and then I poured it into warm water, like tap water, warm water, let it dissolve, and I added my wet pieces of fabric. So these are, you know, the tan and treated ones. And I put this in a plastic bucket. I didn't have a lid, um, so I used aluminum foil just to cover it. I'm doing this outside anyway. But then I let it sit um, overnight. But 
I figured I can start on my dyeing liquid today because time is the key here to all of these things. You need to start planning in advance. So, as I mentioned before, I have been wanting to get into this for some time. I actually started collecting flowers for this purpose last year and they have been taking up space in my freezer <laughs> and I started to get a little bit annoyed with the fact that they were crowding out my freezer space and I still hadn't gone around to using them. So I was like, this is the day I'm going to use my flowers. So right here I have frozen rose, uh, budleia, uh, lavender and marigolds. Now normally you probably would dye each one of these separately. But me being rather anxious about starting this, realizing it's not as much mass here, I don't have as much flower mass as I would have liked, I figured, you know what, I'm going to put them all in the pot. Now, whether this was a good idea or not, I mean, could be debated, but I put them all in the pot. I filled the pot up with water and uh, it's beautiful, isn't it? Look at all those colors. So I started to heat up the, uh, the liquid here with the flowers. It took a while because it's a really big pot. <laughs> a lot of liquid in there, not a very big uh, burner plate here. But my goal was to kind of have it going for a good hour or two. Immediately I was like, okay, let's see if I get in color. But you know, no color so far. Nothing much on that piece of linen. So let's go outside and sit and look at the trees for a little while and then uh, do a little carving and come back and look at the pod. You know, I'm not sure if there's an exact science to this. Um, I mean, the thing is, um, everything is going to vary what color you get depending on um, what plants you used, what at what stage of development of that plant's life you have, um, how much, there's so many different factors. And I kind of settled on doing this in a rather unscientific way, just kind of for fun. See now the color has changed quite dramatically. These flowers are much more muted in color now, especially the rose, which was so bright in pink. Um, it's now much more kind of darker color. So at this point now it had been simmering for about an hour, a little bit more. We're well, not simmering, a very low simmer, trying not to heat them up too much to kill the color. Uh, but what I did was to just shut the heat off and, and leave the flowers in the water in the pot overnight. And I think depending on the plant, you can do this longer, you can extract things in different ways. Now the next morning here, the water was cold. I had my little assistant here help me. And uh, I, I realized I, I maybe have, you know, I used a lot of water. So I drained out the solids. I put it back on the hot plate and heated up the water. Um, and here I'm keeping, I'm taking notes at the same time and that's something I've learned that you think you're going to remember what you did, but you're not. So just write down whatever it is that you're doing so you can refer back to it later on. And then I brought it all back up to a, a low simmer and I brought in my wet fabric. This had been lying in the, uh, uh, the more denting solution, so the alum. So I just took the alum water out, I gave it a quick rinse, um, and then the pieces were still wet. I transferred them directly to the dye pot. And when I'm saying this, I realize this sounds like a lot of steps. And that's kind of what I was thinking about first, but it's not really. Like I have broken it down in my mind since then and think about it like this. Okay, you have wash, check. Tannin, yes, maybe, you don't really need to do it all the time. Then you just need to do this more denting step where you pre-treat it ahead of time. You can do that in advance, as far as I can tell. You just need to re-soak the fabric beforehand because you don't want to put the dry fabric into this flower <laughs> solution here. But once you have this more dented fabric, you're ready to just throw some stuff in a pot and then let it extract color. 
Now I was curious, what kind of color could I expect from this? Because I had rose and lavender, which I was expecting I could get kind of a pink color from. Uh, Boudleja, usually get maybe um, yellow and marigold, also more yellow. So I was thinking pinkish, yellowish, orangey color. And it definitely is a bit, you know, it's on the yellow side, but yeah. So doing this fabric dyeing is kind of like a slow process. It's something that you kind of want to keep going in the background as you do other things. It really shouldn't be your full focus that day because then you just keep staring at that pot. Um, but it's kind of funny because uh, it, it, once you kind of get into the flow of it, it's a nice kind of background activity to constantly kind of have going, just like sourdough or any other kind of fermentation or something like that. Um, so at this point, I put two pieces of fabric in this initially. And the reason why I didn't put all my fabric in is because the, one of the main reasons why I wanted to get into this is because I wanted to create gradient colors. Years ago, I did a bunch of quilts, got into like making beautiful quilts, but lately I, I felt like all the fabric was so loud and, and, and busy and I wanted to kind of create a nice quilt with this kind of gradients of color instead with some contrast. The variation you can get is so beautiful. So that's really why I wanted to do this to kind of create my own gradient shades. Now the way that you accomplish that is by doing several dips. <laughs> So this is the first time I'm ever playing with this and I don't know what to expect here. So I started with two pieces of fabric out of my five pieces that I had prepared ahead of time. And then once those two pieces had been going for about an hour, I took them out, put them in some water right away just to rinse them off and then I put in some new fabric. So some of the, the dye, some of the color will have already been extracted at this point. So the next sheets will be, you know, a different color. So I put the string across the shop here to kind of hang the fabric up. And look at this yellow. It's kind of like a camel tan. It's quite beautiful. So here's this second batch, the second dip. So I was expecting it to be a little bit uh, lighter in color. Now the next step that I wanted to do was to add an iron modifier. Now you can buy iron concentrate, uh, you know, iron products of different kinds. What I did, what a year ago now, a long time ago, I basically just added some um, vinegar to steel wool in a mason jar. And it disintegrates and you get iron that you can use. Now a little tip if you ever do this, don't use a metal lid. I was having a lot of issues getting this lid off and once I eventually did with the help of a screwdriver, I realized that the whole lid has kind of disintegrated. So please use the plastic, <laughs> don't use metal <laughs> for a lid or use a whole plastic bottle. Uh, so anyway, I poured in some some of this iron. I wasn't sure exactly how much. I mean, this kind of comes back to this unscientific process here. Um, I'm sure you can, if you, especially if you're using a concentrate too that you buy, I mean, you, you can have a lot more control over the, you know, exactly how much you're using. But I figured I'd start a little bit and I added some. And I think I added quite a bit actually, because um, I got quite a, a dark color going from this iron. Kind of like this khaki green color. I, I, I was quite thrilled. I thought it was really cool. So I did iron dips with two fabrics now. So the first one from the first dip, so the darkest color. So I had one, you know, going in iron and one that hadn't been in iron to see the difference. And then for the second dip, I had also added two pieces of fabric. So one that I was saving and one that I was going in the iron dip. So that I would hopefully have a gradient color in that uh, way too. And then um, I figured I would also put in uh, um, a more dented piece of fabric that hadn't been soaking at all in the, uh, in the floral solution. So directly into this pot with the iron and it, would just, like, it went in there for a couple seconds and then I took it out. And that one had kind of like a a really nice color actually, I really like that one on the right there that has the kind of light grayish, greenish, yeah, whatever you want to call it. So here you have my pieces and so they're hanging there and 
um, it's a little different from what I expected. I was definitely thinking more in the purplish, reddish, pinkish direction, and this is definitely more in the yellow, greenish direction. Of course, iron will have that kind of dulling effect. Um, but I was, I, was, I was thrilled nonetheless. Just the fact that I was able to get these colors from these flowers was really, really neat to me. And then I was kind of wondering, okay, well, this is when they're wet. What are they going to look like when they're dry? So next morning, coffee in hand, I walked out to the shop and took a look. And you can see here, they are definitely lighter in color. Same colors though, but just like a, a couple shades lighter, uh, which is funny because, if, I mean, I knew this going into it, but if you want to create dark colors, you really need a lot of material in order to extract that color or something very potent. But look at them all here together. That is a beautiful grading. Um, see, now I, I get so excited about these colors, I kind of want to use it for like a, I don't know, clothing or something right away. Maybe make like a, a quilted dress or something, I don't know. I haven't made up my mind yet, but I do like them a lot. I do think that the gradient is beautiful. Now I wanted to make sure that I got in the habit of labeling whatever I had <laughs> so that I wouldn't be confused later on. And the other thing I wanted to make sure was that I um, added this to my book. So I cut out little pieces and I was debating like, okay, how do you actually attach fabric the best to a book? Should I glue them? Should I tape them? And I was thinking, ah, how annoying would it be if they all fall out at some point? But if I sew them, just using regular needle and thread uh, through the paper, they're gonna adhere beautifully and they're not gonna fall out. So that's what I did. I just very simply sewed a stitch on each piece of fabric and I wrote down here what the situation was. What, like, was it the first dip, the second dip? How, did it get iron or not? And that, that's what I got. That's my experience um, dyeing fabric with natural flowers and plants. It's something that, you know, may seem overwhelming. It may seem like a lot of steps. Um, but I, I found, because I've been kind of playing with it some more after this point too, that it's kind of like anything. Once you get certain steps in your mind, it's actually not that <laughs> difficult. You can constantly have some plants kind of going in your pot and extract and dye and the time situation too, like how long you let something soak, how long you let the, the, the color extract from the plant is also kind of not precise, which is what I think is really appealing. It's really kind of fun to just have this this kind of craft that's really playful and that um, you don't know what to expect. Um, each time I think you can expect a different result. And of course I used linen here, if you use a different kind of fabric, if you use cotton, if you use silk, um, if you use wool to dye, um, you're gonna get a different result as well. Um, so yeah, um, I hope this was informative to whoever is watching. If you also have been thinking about getting into this so much fun i can highly recommend it i really enjoyed it um, and i have like a lot of other plants i want to kind of try out and see what color i could get from them uh, but yeah thanks for watching and uh, bye from my little shop to yours <laughs>